Every horror film ever made, 1895 to present, starting with The Execution of Queen Mary of Scots in 1895, all the way to Wolf Creek 3 2022. Now just to give you an idea of the scale of this list, it says that I've watched 118 movies from it, and that amounts to a whopping 0% of the total 23,433 items. And you know, Halloween's right around the corner, so I decided that, you know, maybe it'd be a good idea to watch a couple of movies from this list. Well then you gotta wonder, how are you gonna possibly pick one movie from this vast list? I mean, it has so many movies. I mean, how could you pick between Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, Friday the 13th, or even Friday the 13th? I mean, I could never pick between them. And so for that reason, we're not going to pick. The computer is. So how are we going to go about doing this? Well, I'm not exactly a Michael Reeves, so I'm not going to like program some script or whatever to randomly pick a movie. The random number generator in Google, uh, I don't even know if it goes up to 20,000, and even if it does, I really don't want to like count every single one up to like 23,000. So I think I developed a way that's a bit simpler and free to use. So the list has 128 pages, right? And with each page, it has 20 rows and 5 columns. So what I have is a random number generator, 1 through 128, and then two number spinners, one of which goes up to 20 and one of which goes up to 5, all courtesy of Google. And by the way, this isn't some like convoluted excuse to watch some predetermined movie. I genuinely have no idea what's about to happen. Uh, but this way, I have no control over what I watch. I mean, you could, we could end up watching something like for babies or just not scary at all like Sallow or whatever. You know, or we could watch something like genuinely like horrific, like Uncle Josh goes to a spooky hotel. So yeah, I guess <laughs> I guess we'll just go ahead and spin. I'm actually kind of uh, I I don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> All right, page ninety one. Okay. Like I said, it's kind of a numeric order, so that's probably going to be in the two thousands. Do you think? Oh, I just. <laughs> Just to prove just to prove how unplanned this is. I just realized there's no like search for page number So I'm gonna have to manually scroll down and click every two pages down to 91. Oh This is gonna take a while. I guess that means it's time for a montage Page 91. Okay, before we do the, the other spins, I just want to sort of look at what our possibilities are. So we're at 2005. Ugh. It's like post saw. Is there anything, anything I recognize? <gasps> we could watch Doom! Okay, okay. I know what I'm hoping for. If I get, if we get Doom, I'm actually gonna end the video. Alright, so. <gasps> House of Dead 2. Okay, we, so we have we have some good stuff on this list. I the potential is high. All right, so now we're gonna spin for the row, and then on that row there will be five candidates, which I'll look at more in depth. So let's see. Row 20, the last row. Okay, what are our options here? Alien Apocalypse, Alone in the Dark. Adios para siempre, which is goodbye always, or goodbye forever, am I right? Or is that completely wrong? Actress Apocalypse, and, hang on, what does that mean? Cough over there. <laughs> Cough over there, okay. I mean, it's topical. Okay, I'm, I'm definitely hoping for that one so far. This has a, okay, Alone in the Dark has a 1.1 stars average. 1,900 half a star ratings, okay. Supernatural Pneumonia, okay. Okay, this is kind of awesome. Adios para siempre. There's only one review? Dude, two people have seen this movie. I don't even know if this movie is real. Yeah, none of these, I, I, I was correct in saying, like, 2005, worst year for horror. Now, for the moment of truth. Let's find out what we're gonna be watching today. <laughs> A 
Alien Apocalypse! Yay! I'm so happy we didn't get Cough Over There or any of the cool sounding ones. Yesterday, they were our- they were only astronauts. Today, their humanity is only hope. Oh, hey. Seaman wants to watch this. Hang on, I'm gonna- I'm gonna actually- I'm gonna, hang on. So, I randomly selected, uh, just one movie off of a list of 23,000. And I got- I got Alien Apocalypse. And I saw it's on your watch list, and I just wanted to know why. Bruce Campbell's in it, maybe that's why? I'll, I'll let you know if it's good. Maybe it's good. Yeah. I, I do not know. The poster is in, like, Italian or something. I must have just been going through Bruce Campbell films and being like, eh, he's an insane actor. Click, 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 click. <laughs> well, I guess I gotta find a way to watch it now, so I'll talk to you <laughs> later, I guess. <laughs> Astronaut Dr. Ivan Hood and his fellow astronaut Kelly return from their mission in space to find the world has been taken over by aliens? Oh, it aired on the Sci-Fi Channel. That is a good sign. Oh, so it's kind of like Planet of the Apes, but with aliens in instead of apes. I think it had a budget of 1.5 million? What? 1.5 million. Wait, what was the budget? What was... Alright, so now I guess we'll just watch the trailer. After 40 years in space, four brave astronauts return home. Wasn't Portland in the middle of the woods? But life as they remember it has changed. My name is Captain Chuck Burks, United States Air Force. Aliens have enslaved the human race. It's Planet of the Apes. Tell me now, who are you? What's going on? What are you aliens doing here? <laughs> Space cop. Never mind. I take it all back. It's space cop. Why is it? Is this actually? It's 240p. Okay. I was gonna say, is it 144? It's not 144. It's 240. I retract my statements. This is awesome. Your work well, and you will live. That is your only choice. What are these aliens doing here? Wood. They're here for wood. They slowly but surely stripping all the trees on Earth. They're here for wood. They slowly but surely stripping all the trees. On Earth. <laughs> They're here for wood. Of all the alien, like, motivations, I mean, I guess water, food, materials, uh, I mean, specifically wood? Like, of, of all things. Alien Apocalypse. You like wood so much? Eat this! You wanna, you like wood so much? Eat this! And then he shoots wood, he shoots like a wooden, like, spear into its, it's, it's the irony, because they're after wood, and, I don't want to do this. I refuse to believe this is a real movie. Nothing about it makes any sense. The plot, the dialogue, the effects, the budget, the acting, the dubbing, nothing adds up. And you're probably thinking to yourself, oh, it's a made-for-TV movie that was probably made with the intention of being bad, so your criticisms are therefore invalid. And while that is probably true to a certain extent, I'm not gonna let it off the hook that easy, as $1.5 million is still $1.5 million. I mean, I could probably think of at least, like, three better uses for that money. What planet are you from? <laughs> there, does that help Bruh. you understand? Oh, it looks so bad. By the way, I recorded a full commentary track slash reaction for this movie. Uh, link in description if you want to watch it, but maybe I'll make a highlight video for it, I don't know, but anyway.
I think the best way to describe it is by comparing it to like a YouTuber movie. And when I say that, I'm not talking about this type of YouTuber movie. I'm talking more about this kind of YouTuber movie. I'm gonna dig out of here with a spoon. From a narrative perspective, it's an absolute nightmare. The progression of events feels so forced and straightforward that it feels like it was just ad-libbed onto a blank story circle. We start out with our four protagonists landing back on Earth after being gone for 40 years, only to find it a little bit different than they remembered. Human slavers kill one of them for having a limp, and then take the remaining three to meet their new alien masters. And, uh, if this is sounding a little bit familiar, it's because it's essentially a beat-for-beat -beat knockoff of the Planet of the Apes. And, you know, of course when I say that, this is just my speculation, you know? There's no way I could possibly prove any connection between the director and the Planet of the Apes. The suit is a direct steal from the 1968 Planet of the Apes. From here, the plot derails pretty much instantly, which is kind of impressive considering we're less than 10 minutes into the movie. Just to give you a quick idea of how sporadic the plot points are from here, we go from alien camp, to a chase sequence, to finding another human survivor in a cave, to finding an independent and alien-free village, to going on a quest to find the president and his rebellion, to going through the forest and making friends with random people that try to kill them, to confronting the president and realizing there is no rebellion, but then returning back to that human village and inspiring an actual rebellion, to fighting and defeating the aliens. And of course, all while Bruce Campbell delivers his hilarious one-liners. Ah, just what the doctor ordered. Why do you want me to drink if you're gonna stick me with a knife? Because I'm a sadist. Hey, scumbag, you forgot something. What? <laughs> ah. You said you're a doctor. You're supposed to heal people. I am. Your stupidity is terminal. And now you're cured. Back to your hole, troglodyte. Dig. You see all of these things just happen without really any setup, payoff, or even just development. And it's almost just like watching a list of ideas just sort of play out in front of you on the screen. Do you think you can watch? Sure, sure, I feel great! Oh! There's absolutely no subtlety to the fact that this is a made-for-TV, purposely bad movie. What makes a lot of bad movies enjoyable is that the creator at least cares about the story that they're telling, which makes it even funnier to laugh at. But with this, there's just some basic ideas thrown together with 1.5 million. Seriously, I mean, the commentary track is mostly the creator laughing at his own movie. Here's a, a continuity issue. Look all the blood on the your fingers and the and the bullet. Sorry, this is... Oh, wait, it's all wiped out. It's all better now. <laughs> so I've talked a bit about the plot, and you sort of have a general understanding of that. But now I think it's time that we should look at the making of... Josh Becker, who's the writer and director, came up with the idea back in 1988 and pitched it to Sam Raimi collaborator Lawrence Bender, who unfortunately turned him down at the time. Bender would later go on and produce a couple of small indie films that you probably haven't heard of, but that's not really important right now. However, after making several features and directing Xena Warrior Princess for several years, his dreams finally started to become a reality. And by reality, I mean Bulgaria. majority of the cast was just English-speaking Bulgarians that they just sort of found. And I'm not even talking about just the extras, I mean literally everyone except for these two. Because of this, 90% of the dialogue ended up being dubbed. I just saw the bounty hunters carrying away a woman dressed like you. That's better than another district. We've done real good. What are y'all doing up here? The president is just an old man sitting in his chair. Good Perf looping. Perfect synchronization. <laughs> Works every time. Uh, I still hear, oh, get them working. Yeah, in the dailies, of course, it's, what are you doing, friend? Go on over there, buddy. It could not possibly look any more like a made-for-TV movie. This is probably due to the fact that the DP barely used any lighting equipment and just did everything as quickly as possible, which even the director talks about in his commentary track. He is uh, probably one of the fastest directors of photography I've ever worked with. Ever. You go to walk, I would start to walk back in my trailer and we'd hear, we're ready. He's really a no-nonsense uh, director of photography. 
Obviously, the easiest thing to make fun of is the alien CGI, but you know, even that is frustrating because for the over the shoulder shots, they used real rubber puppets that were operated by three people. So, why didn't they just use those instead? It was like they don't even have like such a large amount of aliens in any one frame that like they could not have possibly done it practically. But it was just like, why not just pour a bit more of your $1.5 million budget? into that. Now the bug house is a fascinating exterior. That's real. Uh, it's over two stories tall. Most of our budget went into that. And that's what kills me. When you look at it, 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 it does look real, but it looks like it could have been put there too. So it's crazy that it's actually real. What? So here's just some random trivia about the film that isn't necessarily like a critique. But I just thought it was interesting and I didn't know where else to put it in the video, so uh... The character of Dr. Ivan Hood was based on Sam Raimi's brother, who's actually a real doctor of osteopathic medicine, and hopefully is a little bit better at it than Bruce Campbell is. Obviously, they don't teach chiropractors how to remove arrows properly. Hey, sorry, man. Yeah, sure. We got a deal. See, whatever you do, you don't do this. Ugh. In the future you do, though. That's what I heard. In the lore of the movie, the astronauts left Earth in 2009, then the aliens came in 2029, and then the movie takes place in the year 2049. But then despite the aliens only inhabiting Earth for 20 years, the entire planet has forgotten basic human customs in that span of time. Bruce Campbell uses the F slur. Oh, you know those bounty hunters are f I can get past him. I thought I misheard it the first time I watched it, but then in the commentary track they actually confirm it and say that it was an homage to Fast Times at Ridgemont Hive. Oh, those guys are f That's fantastic. <laughs> then for obvious reasons they had to censor it for TV. So if you want to get the full experience of Alien Apocalypse, you gotta buy the DVD. She was so scared about having this squib on her that she began to cry about an hour before we shot this and didn't stop crying. Uh, that's not her in the second shot, that's a double. And unfortunately, we had to shoot her. Yeah, she wouldn't stop crying, so we had to shoot her. You know, at the end of the day, it's just kind of frustrating to review a movie like this, because yes, obviously, the plot is going to be really stupid. Obviously, visually, it just looks terrible. Obviously, the acting is going to be laughable. But the frustrating part about it is that it clearly like wasn't meant to be anything more than that. There were so many little things they could have done just to make this, at least on a technical level, a better film. But that's the thing, they didn't want to make it better. They just wanted to make a cheesy, cheap alien movie that would air on the sci-fi channel and sell a total of two DVDs. And I guess in that sense, they were completely successful. Which is why I'm giving it a two out of 10 instead of a one. 